Well, it's winter here in North Carolina, and in the winter time, I always have crazy little projects I do. And I've been making jigs with my lead mold that I made, and today I need to uh, go ahead and make a fluid vat to powder paint my jigs. So we're gonna give that a try. I've never done it before. I've been doing a little research, and the hardest part is just trying to find what you see online with what Lowe's has. So we're gonna give it a go. So this is what I'm gonna make. And most of them you see, the fluid vats are about that big around just to dip, you know, jig heads in. Well, what I've got are, I made a mold for vertical jigs and they're about that long and they're about that big around. So I need something that's not gonna take a ton of powder paint to dip the whole jig. So I want something kind of smaller. And I've never tried this, never painted jigs with powder paint, but I'm gonna give it a go. And what I've got is a end cap. It's flat on the end, inch and a quarter end cap, and a coupling for inch and a quarter. So all I've got to do is cut out a little round piece of paper. I'm going to put this on and I'm going to trace about eighth of an inch on all the way around. I can just cut out a circle and this is just plain printer paper. So the idea is to leave a little bit. So I found that, well, I'm going to have to use two hands. But I found that when I mark it with a Sharpie, it leaves about the perfect amount on the outsides. So I'm gonna go ahead, and mark this out, and so I've got my, uh, not quite circle, circle cut out. And all I'm gonna do is take my coupling, lay my somewhat symmetrical circle on there. And now I'm gonna take my end cap and put on there like so press it down and as you can see I'll check and make sure I've already done this once and wanted to do kind of a test to see if I could beat these apart and I was able to I put this in a vise just loose so holding this up took a punch and punched it out because I didn't want to make something that I couldn't place the paper if I busted the paper so now all I've got to do is beat it together and all I'm going to do is just take a old piece of wood I had laying already at my feet. And there we go. So now I've already cut some inch and a quarter PVC somewhere. we got to find it now. I've already lost it. This is my jig mold. And this, these are for offshore vertical jigs. But I want to make sure that it's long enough but not too long. So I want the bottom of the jig to be, I don't want to quite touch the paper and know that if I put that in about the top of the ring, I'll be pretty close, but I want to be able to have enough to keep it fluid. So it's about, I haven't measured, it's about six inches. Long or as short as you wanted to. If you wanted to just dip jig heads, you could probably do it like that, put fill it up to about there and cut the air on, I'm assuming. I haven't tried it yet, but we're gonna see how it works. And I want something deep, because I'm gonna be dipping a long offshore jig in there. So these, I'm just gonna beat down in there and see if that works. I wanna be able to take this apart if I need to. I don't wanna glue everything together, and that's a pretty tight fit. So I think it'll work. If not, I'll put maybe a little bead of silicone in there so I can still get it apart if I ever bust that paper out. So now, the tubing I picked up, it's quarter inch outside diameter. So I've got a quarter inch bit on my drill here, and all I'm gonna do is drill a hole through both the outside wall and the inside wall, and that way I can just shove that little piece of pipe in there. So I went ahead and cut me some little pieces, about a foot, foot and a half, of this pipe and it fits real snug and it's going to be really hard to do i really need my tripod i think i say that in every video i just can't keep track of them so see how tight that fits that is really tight in there but perfect i think that's going to make a perfect seal as long as whenever i'm done i pull that out and it doesn't shrink the, tu the tubing down or if it does i can just cut it right there I think that's going to be a good airtight fit because I mean that's tight so I don't think there's any need to epoxy or silicone that in so there we go so 
normally you would use a little aquarium pump for this, but what I'm going to do, I don't want to spend the money on an aquarium pump or something I'm not going to use a whole lot. I'm going to use this once a year to make jigs and that'll probably be it. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to go steal the air regulator off my paint gun and see how I can figure out to hook it up to that. All right, so I think I finally got it figured out and someone's getting ready to probably die laughing at me, but it's okay. Sometimes ingenuity is the mother of invention. But uh, so what I've got is just my air hose with the tip on it connected to the pipe going in. And I've got my regulator set at about one PSI. Well, it's actually running about four PSI right now. So I think that's what it is. Yeah, it's running low. I'm going to adjust it down. I'm going to play with that. But it's running. You can feel the air coming out of there. And I think once I hold this down, play with the adjustment just a little bit, actually get some powder paint in there, I think it'll work good. And I'll just take a zip tie and hold that. I'm just waiting on the FedEx man to get here. He's got to get my powder paint to the house. And we're going to give this thing a try out. So I think it'll work. Hopefully I won't create a volcano. Because the powder paint, I don't know if I got enough. I got about four ounces. I think that should fill this tube up all the way. But I don't want, I'd rather put a little bit less in there and make it boil a little more. And I'm just going to play with it. I've never done it. We're going to give it a try and see how it works. But I think it'll work. And we'll see what happens as soon as the FedEx guy gets here. Well, it's been a couple weeks since I made these. And I've just been busy. And today it's freezing cold and raining so i can't work on all the other crap that i need to get done so i'm going to work on these so i've got this it was wanting to kind of fall over so i just used a clamp to hold it up and i've got it hooked up to my air hose which i've got another clamp on and i'm not sure how this is going to work i'm going to start off putting just a little bit of powder in there and seeing because i'm afraid i may create a volcano that's why i've got the plate under here so hopefully if it blows any out or i spill any i can save it because this stuff it's about I think it was $12 for four ounces, maybe more. These were two ounces and I think they were eight or nine dollars. But I got these from TJ's Tackle and he's got some really good videos on there on how to use this powder paint. And I'll put that in the link because that was really helpful. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. All right, so I've got this adjusted down really, really low. And I haven't, I'm not, I think I'm just gonna use one hand and hold it. And we'll see what we got and get it to focus. Ah, it's working. So that's working good. I mean, that looks really good, I guess. I've never done this. So I don't know. It looks good to me. I'm going to cut it up just a little bit because I got it narrow. I've got these jigs I made. I made a mold and made these. And uh, I want to see, I've got a, you know, that's about three and a half inches and I've got to be able to dip the whole thing and I've only got four ounces and that's only about hardly any in there but I want to see if I can make it really go this thing may explode in my face we'll see but I'm just going to play with the uh... oh god yeah I can just bump it, put it down in there, and it's coming up. I mean, it's, oh God, it's coming up like an inch, but it's kind of going airborne, so I may put it All on All right, mass. so I filled it on up, and this thing is about a volcano if I go, if I squeeze the trigger all the way, I'm just having to bump it. But I think that's gonna work absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna get my torch. I was doing this at the house, I may get me one of those little small aquarium pumps and uh, do it that way. But for now, I just wanna see if I can make this work. I'm trying to get it adjusted just right. So, gotta heat these things up. All right, so I've got my torch going. And I'm just gonna, I've already warmed it up a little bit. I'm just gonna give it a couple little hits and hope that the, uh, Copper wire doesn't burn my fingers. 
just too hard. I tried doing this with gloves, it's just too hard to hold. So, I'll try to get it good and hot. Alright, I think we're good. So, <laughs> Look at that. That worked flawlessly. That is awesome. I was doing this with a brush. Apparently I got it too hot. I was doing this with a brush and it was taking me forever. I mean, that took like two seconds and it's just the perfect even coat. That's pretty cool. All right, one down. I got my little hooks here. All right, so I just burnt the snot out of my hand trying to hold that copper. So I'm gonna use a pair of pliers. I've only got this thing filled up about halfway. And I'm just getting easily, real easily putting the air to it. Yeah, that works so good. That's just amazing to me. So this is my first coat. I'm gonna do a white and then I'm gonna do a glow coat. That's awesome. Time well spent making these things. So I found this real helpful. I made these little hooks to out of some old copper wire. And I'm holding it with a pair of pliers where I move it up, dip it in, and then I can just bring it right on my little hooks. And this made it way easier. I've got them all done here. And this is just my first coat. But one thing I noticed is I, it was getting a little bit low. My air, for whatever reason, the compressor wasn't built up or something, but it wasn't going up quite as high as normal. And I hit the paper with the lead and then it brought up, find which one it was. Well, it's not on there now, but it looked like it brought up paper fibers. So I may have messed up the paper on this one. I don't know, but I'm done with this color. So I'm gonna dump it out. I made two, but I think I'm gonna use the same one or just see, I wanna see what that paper looks like now. All right, if I can get this thing to focus and my flashlight to quit cutting off, come on. You can see down in there kind of, if I could just get the daggone thing to focus. That's where I hit the paper and the fibers came out on it. So <laughs> I don't know how you keep from doing that. I guess you just gotta always make sure that you kind of mark it in some way, figure out a way to muscle memory something to keep from hitting that paper. But All right, so for comparison, these were equal when uh, I started. And I did six big jigs, and it took about three-fourths to half of this jar, so about two, two and a half ounces, to fill this thing up. And you can tell it used about a quarter of it to do these jigs, and that's six of them. So, I mean, it goes, this powder goes a pretty decent ways, but I'm gonna definitely have to order more if I make any more jigs, because well, I could probably get quite a few, but you gotta have enough to get this thing full for these long jigs. So now, this is the new one. I'm gonna go ahead and do the glow. Kinda hard to get the jig heated back up and getting it not too hot, but hot enough to uh, get it to stick. So I'm having to go back once I dip it and kinda heat it back up a little bit but it's doing a good job. So I've got this one good and heated. And this glow coat, it does not do as well as the white. It doesn't flow up as nice. It kind of just spits and sputters. The white flows up really nice. But I mean, it's still doing the trick. It's a lot easier than doing it with a paintbrush. And that's what I did the other day and it took me forever. But the only issue with using a torch is um, if I get it too hot on a couple of them I have, I've got it just a touch too hot and it kind of off colors the white, which is fine with me because I don't want them super white anyway. But you just gotta be kind of careful with that with a torch. But it works really good. So that's it, that was the last one. So uh, my tripod is not big enough to or tall enough to even see anything. So I had my camera set up on my pocket knife and held down with a jar of paint. So one thing I like about these is I made a mess, but all you gotta do is you can put a cap on it or just pour it right back in the cup. 
and that's what I'm gonna do just to keep moisture out of it. Well, they're cooling off, and I've got a couple little pinholes, and this one's not quite as smooth. But uh, I think when I cure these, I gotta put them in the oven for, I think like 350, 375 for about 15, 20 minutes. And I think when I cure these, they'll do a lot better. But uh, one thing I've been kind of struggling with is I haven't really wanted to spend 30, 40 bucks on a spray gun. And I wanted to get some color on these in some form. So I'm gonna try, I tried using a paintbrush and dabbing it when it was hot and that just did horrible. It smeared one everywhere. That was not the way to do it. But uh, I'm gonna try a couple different things and see what I can figure out to get a little color on these. I've got some glitter also. I'm gonna glitter these and uh, it worked really good. I'm gonna tell you that was definitely way better than doing it by a paintbrush and it turned out a lot of even more even of a coat and I'll take a picture and put it at the end of the video some I did with by the paintbrush and you can tell a huge difference and dipping them and just sprinkling it on with a paintbrush but uh definitely worth the couple dollars I spent to do this I already had the pressure regulator for my paint gun and what everyone uses that I've seen are aquarium air pumps and I wanted to just kind of try it before I spent 20 bucks on an air pump. And another option I was going to try, but it wouldn't work. I couldn't find any batteries, and I'm not going to go out and get any. But was a uh, little aerator for a battery-operated aerator for a bait tank. And just about every fisherman already has one of those. So if anybody gives that a try, let me know how that works. I'm going to get some new batteries, and I think mine may be fried. I left it out in the boat. But... uh. Let me know how that works for somebody if they give that one a try. Well, we got them in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. And I put a uh, clear glitter coat on these. That's why they're dripping. Well, I hope you like this little video. It's been over a couple weeks. Uh, I hope I didn't, when I'm editing this, I hope I didn't skip anything or forget to mention something. If I do, I'll uh, put it in the end of the video. But appreciate everybody watching. And this was definitely helpful to me. And it was a nice little decent experiment. I've never tried it, but... I kind of took what I'd seen and then kind of put it to my application because I needed to dip those longer jigs that I made. So I hope you liked the video. Please leave a thumbs up, subscribe. We'll see you next time.